international service. May God bless you all. Amen. We are going to sing together from our CGS number 12. It's our first song. We'll be singing uh, verses 1, 2, 4, and 6. 1, 2, 4, and 6 from CGS number 12. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Brother Mike uh, Olabi is our song leader for this morning, so you'll be leading us on this song and others to follow. strength renewed. We take verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4 after the introduction.
Let's go to the chorus number 28. Chorus number 28. Jesus bid us shine with a pure, clear light. May God help us to shine in this world of uh, darkness. We'll listen to the tune and take this two times. I think there are verses there. Yes. Two times. Descend, 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 oh Lord, with your power. Amen. Let's listen to the tune and sing as it is being displayed. Jesus descend Amen. and bless us abundantly. Amen. The song before prayer will be 426. 426. 426. CGS. 426. We'll sing uh, the first and the second verses standing, if you can, and remain standing, after which we shall be led in prayer. 426 verses 1 and 2. When we are singing the second verse, there will be no instrument. We'll sing it a cappella, and after which we'll be led in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. Thank you for this day. Yes, thank you for bringing us into your house Amen. once again. We give praise. Amen. We give glory. Amen. We give honor to your name. Amen. We pray that you visit us in a special way. Amen. pray that you bless every soul Amen. as the word comes out. We pray Amen. that you anoint the preacher. Amen. 
Lord, when we come around the altars to pray, we pray that you visit us. We pray that you answer our prayers with salvation of souls, with sanctification of souls, with Holy Ghost and fire baptism, healing of the sick, and answer to our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to the house of God. May God bless each and every one of you for coming. Amen. For our internet audience, we are the Apostolic Faith Church, and we are located on number 13, Penhill Road, DA53EP. If you live local or you visit, you are more than welcome to join us in our services. We'll be having a combined prayer meeting at 5 p.m., and then at, during the course of the week, on Monday, we're going to be having prayer meetings through to Thursday at 7.30 p.m. And then on Friday, we're going to be having extended prayer meeting. It's our end of month uh, prayer meeting. So we'll be having prayer meeting between the hours of 8 that's p.m. and 11 p.m. If Jesus tarries Saturday, we have a virtual prayer meeting at 8 a.m. Next Sunday, again, if the Lord tarries, we'll be having Sunday school for all ages as we are having now at 10 a.m. We have devotional service at 11.15 a.m. And then at 2.30, we'll be having y for c uh, it's a special uh, event titled Dream Big. And obviously, it will be joined virtually, and the Zoom link will be provided. For our young people, it is important to know that you have been asked to get these things ready. Poster boards or form boards or A3 sheet paper, favorite Bible scriptures, magazines, scissors, glue sticks, or cello tape. So those are the things you need to have in place. If you miss any of these, please feel free to contact Brother Banji. He'll be able to give you more details about this. Combined prayer meeting will be there still next Sunday at 5 p.m. Just a reminder that uh, annual camp meeting is planned for July 23 to July 31st, and please do register your intention to attend via our website. Um, just one thing to know, the details of payment for the camp fees are on our notice board, and for this year, we're told that, well, the transportation cost is covered by the church, so we want as many people as can come to attend to the camp meeting. We will now listen to the first special. That will be followed by scripture reading. This first special is a choir song, Pray the Clouds Away. That will be followed by a scripture reading from uh, Romans, Book of Romans. Um, and then... We're going to be having the last special after the scripture reading. And the last special is a duet, Faith in God Can Move Mountain, by J.W. Patterson, and to be given by Sister Freddie and Sister Emma. And then after that, we'll have the word of exhortation for today. God bless you.
expenses, give the wolf back the door. Then you gaze upon your loved ones, thinking of the needed comfort, but the needs are known to him. Pray the clouds away. Pray the clouds away. Bible reading for our service this morning is taken from <clears throat> the book of Romans, chapter 13, and we shall be reading from verse 7 to verse 14. Romans, chapter 13, from verse 7 to verse 14. Romans 13, 7. Render, therefore, to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Eight, owe no man anything, but love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Nine, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time that now, it is high time to awake out of sleep. 
For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof.
Romans 13, our Bible reading. <clears throat> Romans 13, verse 11. <clears throat> Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Amen. And the theme, the title for this message is taken from that verse. Time to awake out of sleep. Time to awake your inner giant. We're looking at what is this giant and why is it inside you? And why do we need to wake it up? Because we are in a revival season. Amen. Proverbs. Keep your hand in that Bible reading. We'll come back there. Proverbs 18. Verse 16. Proverbs 18. Verse 16. A man's gift make it room for him and bring it him before the great man. A man's gift here, the gift can be regarded as the capacity what you can do. Gift that God has given unto you, your ability Gift that God has given to you, your talent. Gift that God has given unto you, your skills to do things in such a way that other people will admire you because you are gifted. A man's gift, make a room for him. That is to say, God has given you and I gift. There's no one in this world that is not given something peculiar to him or her by God. You will personally notice that there's something you can do so well while others will struggle. That is for you now to identify that is your gift. And then if you utilize that gift is going to bring you forward before the great man. The gift, the capacity, the ability, the talent, the skill that you have. Maybe, I presume, they have been sleeping. They are inside you. And that is what we need to wake up Because the word revival, in a very simple dictionary meaning or Google meaning, is to is uh, the word revival literally means renewal or awakening. And tell you me, you cannot renew what does not exist. It is impossible to restore something that never existed. So when we talk about revival, there is something that is sleeping. Yeah. And we need to revive it. Yes. We need to wake it up. Yes. And when that thing in you, which is called inner giant, when it is revived, the environment will feel it. Amen. To revive is to activate to set in motion, or to take up again. To revise, to renew, to revive old fields, to restore to life from unconsciousness to consciousness. The medical people will say 
We revive him with artificial respiration. The person is there already, but we want to get him back to life. So they use different methods. And one of them is artificial respiration. And when that worked, they now put it in their record, Mr. So and so, or Miss this and that, was revived or restored back to life by artificial respiration. To revive means to put on again, to show it again. That wonderful skill inside you, to show it again, you will be the witness with me that those athletes, that they do things, they have to practice. To yes. soon know that they have muscle. If they keep the muscle there, they'll be having pain, and that muscle will die with them. But when they practice regularly, the muscle build up, and they can feel that they are strong. They can do things that people cannot, other people may not be able to do. So to activate that muscle, you've got to exercise the muscle. It's already there. The musician, look at those uh, two wonderful sisters that just sang do it now. I know them for ages, especially Sister Freddie. I know her when I was just a teenager. And her voice still remained the same. Because she's been practicing her voice. And when uh, the two of them sang, it's as if the, the angel is from heaven. Why? Because they practice. If they don't practice that skill, it will die with them. So they activate that excellent skill in them. And it becomes effective and of blessing to you and me. When the first time in my life I was just 12, I went to the swimming pool. I wanted to swim, but I didn't know how to. But that thing was in me that I can swim. I went all where people were jumping, like every other one. And then, bang, I dive into the water. Luckily, at that time, I could hold my breath for five minutes without breathing. So as I went down in the water, I discovered now death is coming. <laughs> but luckily, I hold my breath because I can do that. I still do that now, maybe not up to five minutes. At least one to two minutes I can do without breathing. It is practice. So because of that, I floated. And the rest killed me. And since that time, I kept on practicing how to swim. Throw me into any water now, that's not a problem anymore. I can lie down and sleep on the water because I practice. It's like my own food now. I have to do it regularly. And it keeps me fresh and strong. So, you can see the things that you have have to be activated. Yeah. And that is what we call revival. Yeah. When what you have is activated, then you are revived. Amen. Remember the story in the book of Luke chapter 8. I'm not going to read it now from verse 28. That story is about the gathering demoniac. When he was asked, what is your name? He said, legion. That means so many. But these so many legion, there is one giant in him that can kick out that legion. But because his giant was asleep, the legion, they were pestering his life. But the day he came back to his senses, and with that giant, he kicked them out. You see the picture they just show us now? When that giant was sleeping, you see people standing on the head, on the toe. When you are sleeping, some people are so much when they sleep that they can pull them away to the street. They won't wake up. Because sleep is powerful, you know. During the sleeping time is the process time that God comes down to heal up our body. And when the operations is going on, many times we are in deep sleep. And so when you are sleeping, you cannot react to things around you. 
If mosquito or flies or bees or anything is flying, you cannot wave it away because you are asleep. But if you wake up, let anything come around your face, bang. You kick it away. And this is how it is that you and I need to wake up our spiritual giant. Permit me today, if you see somebody beside you sleeping, tell the person, wake up! <laughs> Look around. Anybody sleeping there? Tell them, wake up! <laughs> it is not the time to sleep. Yeah. God made the day for us to wake up. Yes. He made the night for us to sleep. Yeah. My father, blessed memory, said to me, he's a lazy man who sleep in the daytime. I'm not talking of siesta. I don't do it though. A man will be awake in the day, thinking, not sleeping. Except he's having siesta. The book of Psalm 49, verse 20. Psalm 49, verse 20. Man that is in honor and understandeth it not. Is like the beast that perish. Yeah. You were in honor. The power of God is embedded in you. The Bible says, saints will be at your door mouth, as it were. But that you will have dominion yes. over sin. But when you do not know the inner giant in you, then sin is kicking you about, slapping your face. Sin is messing around your life. And it's making you to be weak and feeble and scared. Because you have an honor embedded inside you, but you do not know it. The Bible says you will be like the beast that perish. May God wake up your inner giant. Amen. Oh, I cannot deal with all this. I am so weak. Who said so? There's nothing you cannot do. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Where is that sin that is tormenting you? Command it to go. Because you have a giant in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That giant sleeping, if he wake up and see people on, on, on his head, do you think he tell them, sleep, uh, stay there? With one hand, he just fling them away. That is how sin are. Sin, they are just like insects. Mess. Death that has to be cleaned away. But if you don't know, you have the power to do so. Then they scare you. Then they mess up your life. In the book of Romans chapter 1. From verse 29 it says. If we take it from 28 it said. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. If this message doesn't make meaning to you. If the word of God in this church does not touch you, if you feel the just shouting every time, salvation, salvation, salvation. Bible said that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. If you don't accept the righteousness, you will automatically take on righteousness. To do things which are not convenient. I remember I was a little boy when, unfortunately, I was having a mess with cigarette. And my mother was saying, you are too small to be doing this. I was saying to my mother, I can't help it. Just imagine that. What is a cigarette? Command the test to go out of you. In the name of Jesus, it will be gone. Amen. I had one issue I always liked to fight. You know, holding my beast and beat somebody. But when I come to Jesus, that box that my hand holding my fist goes to my pocket. Amen. It doesn't hit anybody anymore. Amen. Because inside you is a giant 
who can control and command anything messing about your life. Yeah. You are a person of honor. Amen. You need to recognize that. Amen. You need to know that God has embedded in you the power, authority, to say, and so shall it be. Amen. When you realize that, when you wake up from your sleep, you will now live confidently. The situation may be hard or tough, like it happened to Job, but you know that your heart is plain. Amen. And you know that your Redeemer lives it. Amen. And that one day he will deliver you. Amen. But it's not for you to be chickening. Oh, my sickness. You put it as your name. My headache. Oh, my arthritis. That's not your name now. Oh, my stomach ache. It's not your stomach ache. It is a stomach ache that comes somewhere. I need to go to where I come from. Yes. Amen. That migraine. Don't say my migraine. It's not your migraine now. Mm. It is a migraine. I need to go back to sender. Amen. Because you have the power. Amen. You have the authority Amen. of the word of God Amen. to command. And so shall it be. Amen. He said if you agree on any matter in this world. They shall be established in heaven. Amen. Amen. 29 of Romans 1. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. If you read and read. When I was young, I used to tell my parents, these are archaic English. These are old English. All right, let's come to our own level now. All these things make your giant to sleep. So let's read this one. This is how God wants it. Look at it, get it, but let me break it down for you. Things that make your giants to sleep, first and foremost, is salvation. You need to be saved. Now you might say, what do you mean? I mean, um, you all know as professionals, if you move job to another place, you'll be tested. Yeah. Not just interview. There are some of us in some cases we have to do exam. What you have been doing for years, when you go to another place, you will do exam to prove that you can do it. They don't just take your CV like that. So, if you say you have been saved, you need to check it again. Amen. And renew your salvation. If it is no renew, your inner giant will be sleeping. And the trouble will be overwhelming upon your head. But when you wake up your inner giant, that trouble will go. Amen. And you will live. Amen. Even people will see you and wonder, how are you managing? You will say, fire is burning. But the bush is not consumed. Amen. Because you have been a giant. Amen. Because you have been born again. Amen. Because your soul has been saved. Amen. Because you are living a righteous life. Amen. Because you are a child of God. Amen. You are a child of the living God. Amen. Because sin has no power over you. Amen. For the Bible said, you will have dominion. Over sin. Amen. 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 When you are saved, you wake up your sleeping giant. Yeah. Romans 1 from 29 to 32 are all these things that make uh, your giants to sleep. But in the modern language, if you are very aimless, your giant will sleep. You are coming to the church. What is your aim? What do you want to achieve today? Do you want to pray through? Or you just want to come and see the people singing? Or you come and come and complain? Is that your aim? When you are aimless, your giant will be sleeping. When your spirit is slumbering, you are slumbering the spirit, your giant will be sleeping. When you are easily discouraged, every little to you, every little things, you are discouraged. Your giant will be sleeping. 
My father of blessed memories always point, pointed me to the lizard. When the lizard jumped from the high uh, uh, floor of mountains, and then, of course, nobody to praise him, the lizard would be raising his head. Yes, I've tried to. I, I have tried to. Stop being discouraged. You are a child of God. When everything discourages you, say no. I do not accept discouragement. Discouragement is not my passion. If you accept discouragement, your giant will be sleeping. Anger. Uh -huh. All of us need to work on that too. I hurt me. Yeah, yeah. At times, you know, anger makes you to react and you do things that you don't want to do. When it happens among the children of God, at times when I don't know, they call me and say, ah, I don't like the way you do this, the way you do that. I quickly thank God that that person realized and called me. And then we'll resolve it. And then our relationship continues. And then our friendship continues. And then my inner giant is awake. But when anger is there, you see the person, you want to hide away your face. Anger is not good though. It kills your inner giant. It makes you weak. It makes you unable to pray. Because you'll be so anger. You cannot even say, Jesus, save my soul. Talkativeness. Samson, a powerful man. Talk too much, nya, 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 nya. He lost his power. If you are, you see, I'm, I'm trying to break down Romans chapter 1, 39 to 30, because they are like a kid English. Some of our young people will say they are ancient grammar. Let's bring it down to our level. Talkativeness will make your giant to sleep. Negative environment. You are always in a place where you cannot even call the name of Jesus. That will make your giant to, split, to sleep. You will have a wrong associations. Friends and companions that are not godly. They are the ones you are always with. It will make your giant to sleep. Making it without any direction. You want to do something that is no oh God, guide me. You just want to guru, 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 guru. You make a mistake and of course your giant will be sleeping. Unbelief will make your giant to be sleeping. There's nothing you believe. That Bible says it's too old. Hey, go and write your own. Laziness. You are so lazy. You can't pray. You can't read the word of God. A whole day will pass. You have not even read one thing. Thank God we have daily devotion that is sent to us weekly. When you open that one, at least that is a guide of one verse that you can read for that day. But when you are too lazy, your inner giant will be sleeping. Evil covenant. Some young people, they just met somebody, they have crush on that person. And the next thing they make a covenant, I'm going to marry you. And then they start to cutting themselves and drinking their blood and things like that. That is evil covenant. It will make your giant to sleep. You need to break that evil covenant and liberate yourself. Pride. Overvaluing yourself. Me and these people, I think I'm their mates. Who is your mate? You don't need to overvalue yourself. Because the F is the Lord. Yes. And the fullness thereof. Yes. Everything belongs to God. Yes. You belong to God. Yes. Don't make yourself too high. You know, some of our young people, when they grow, get to late things, and in their 20s, they've been to university, they will say, are you still in that church? <laughs> are you still there? Yes, we are there because it's all time faith. It is all time faith. And it is good for me. That is why we are there. No interest to a change. When something changes, then you are falabagasted. You are not happy about it. You want everything to be the same way like that. Forever. When there is a change, flow along. Why? You cannot continue to do the same thing but every day, every time, but you want to get a different result. The intellectual said it is a sign of madness. Insane. But doing the same thing. Last year, this year, five years ago, ten years ago. And you don't think about it, that you need to approach it in another way. Something is wrong upstairs. 
You need to think about it. Our teacher in the Sunday school said, if you are doing a business and it's not moving forward, it's not making profit, what do you do? Somebody said, I will change it. Yeah. <laughs> Your mind they should be should be active. Otherwise, you'll be insane. It's not like, come here, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, save my soul. And then you go. Tomorrow, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, save my soul. And then you go. The same thing. And he has not saved your soul. Ah, you need to look at it. Oh. You need to think about it. Oh. Ah, ah, what is happening? Is that so hard? Is God so hard? No. Can he not save? No. Why is your own difficult? Check yourself now. Apply a change. Wake up your inner giant. And say, God, today I must be saved. Amen. Today I repent all my sins. Amen. I do them no more. Amen. And God will give you the power Amen. to go and sin no more. Amen. Ignorance that this world is a war. In Exodus, we are not reading that, chapter 15, verse 3. He said, God is a man of war. Amen. We are living in this war. It's a battle. Mm. Yeah. To succeed is a battle. Yeah. To eat food is a battle. Mm. So you need to realize that you have to survive. Mm. And because it's a battle, you need to wake up and ready for the battle. For the Bible will say that the kingdom of God has become what? It's sovereign powerless. And who will take it? Yeah. You need to take it by force. Yeah. You want to be saved? You need to take that salvation by force. Yeah. Don't keep on prolonging your salvation. Who knows when you will die? Don't keep on pushing forward. Tomorrow I will, I will dedicate more. Why not now, right now, on the spot? Yeah. Yeah. God will wake your inner giant. Amen. Jesus will wake up your inner giant. Amen. The reason why your inner giant has to be waking up is that there are things you can do, but you can't do them. Let me rephrase that word. There are some things you know you have the ability to do. But the power beyond do suppress you down. And you can't do it. So you need to wake up your inner giant. And say, God, set me free. Amen. And God will make a way. Amen. Because of you, God can change protocols. Yes. God can move mountains. Amen. To make you to be where you ought to be. Yes. But you need to wake up. You need to wake that inner giant. When you feel that where you want to go, you cannot go. Your giant is sleeping. You need to wake it up. Because you should be free to do whatever you need to do, wherever you need to go. When I first got my citizenship in this country, I read that line. I said that now you are free. You can do any business. You can buy. You can sell. You can. And I said, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> but this is what God has already given to us. God has already given that to you, to me. You can do whatever that is legitimate. Amen. And God will bless it for you. Amen. There are some unused strengths inside you. When I see young people, I see strength. I see giant, giant of God, heroes of faith. But some of them, they just go like, like a weaker vessel. When God is putting in you energy to do something great for the Lord. And they just go with fear and, and they get scared. Move freely with the Lord on your side. You will move mountains. Wake up your inner giant. There are hidden talents that you are not using. That's why you need to wake up your inner giant. There are unrealized ability. You didn't even identify yourself, whom you are, what you can do. Because of that, you need to wake up your inner giant. There are some skill, there are something embedded in you that is buried and you don't know it and you are suffering. You are looking for employment when you should be employing them. Bless you, brother. Huh? You are calling for help when you should be helping them. You are saying, hey, pray for me, pray for me. When you should be praying and blessing people. Wake up, your inner giant. That is revival. Amen. When you wake up and I wake up, the church will move. Amen. There will be a revival. Amen. Many times the devil has a way of making you weak. Mm. By giving, making people to offend you every day. <laughs> when I first came into this country and they asked me my name, and I say my name is Michael, right on the spot and on my face, they'll call me Mike. 
And I would say, ah, I've just told you my name now. Why are you calling me what I am not? So it kept on going and my heart was boiling. I have to say, God, have mercy. Amen. And it's everywhere now they call me Mike. But that's not my name. <laughs> my name is Michael. Amen. And I want to be like Angel Michael. Amen. I want to be fighting the battle Amen. with God on my side. Amen. I'm not saying that uh, you should not do that. You, all of you are used to that. I'm only saying... If I didn't pray through, that's enough to offend me every minute. When people call me Mike, it's like, uh. <laughs> Before I came here, I used to think that maybe people are lazy. But when I see most of our people, we are, they are from where I come now. Why are you so lazy to call two syllables Michael? <laughs> it's only two syllables. When that brother told me his name is Adebanji, I was so happy. He wake up with what? Crown. He want to be hearing that. That is a man of crown. He wake up with crown. This name has meaning. And here they call you, you are Elizabeth. They say Liz. <laughs> Sorry that I'm saying this. I'm trying to get the picture for us. That if we don't wake up our inner giant, there are many things that will make your giant to be sleepy. You get offended on everything. Yeah. If I say everybody has offended me, you might say no. But if I've called me Mike, you have offended me. But I've taken it. Because I want to have peace. Because I want to move forward. Because I want to achieve my goal. Because I want to wake up my inner giant. And that is how it is. There are some things that will be happening. People will be offending you. You cannot help it. Don't get discouraged. Stand firm. Amen. And let there be revival. Amen. Don't bother when they step on you every time. Yeah. You are a child of the living God. Yeah. That's a lot to say, but it is time. Yeah. If we look at Second Chronicles 7.14, how to wake up our inner giant. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. That is the key. Humble yourself and pray. Don't say, ah, you still dead. That would on a bench. Oh. Where people have been sleeping. That is where the power of God is. Do it as they were doing it. And it will be well with you. Amen. And it's been well with the people of God. Amen. God wants us to pray. He says, and seek my face. And turn from your wicked ways. Then God will hear from heaven. Amen. And he will bless you. Amen. And he will wake up your inner giant. Amen. And he will give us revival. Amen. Do you want to pray? As we are singing. Wake up. Wake up your inner giant. Wake up your inner giant. And pray unto God as we are singing CGS 207.
washes in your blood, O oh Lord. We want our garment to be whiter than snow, O oh Lord. Wake up the giant in our life. We want to awake to righteousness. We want you to awake the inner, inner man, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. As many as have not returned, made the relationship this morning. Lord, establish it. Wake us up. Revive us, O Lord. Revive us, O Lord. And we want to leave this place revived, O Lord. We know you will do more than we can ask. But we pray in Jesus' name.